Well, good evening, everyone that has joined us and welcome. Um, we're going to give a couple more minutes to those just uh, dialing in, logging in, signing on, connecting, whichever term you want to use. So um, just give it a couple more minutes and then we're going to uh, dive right in. Well, let's get started. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, if you're here to talk about cannabis, CBD, love, romance, uh, adding a little fire to your personal life, then you're in absolutely the right place because that's what we're going to be covering tonight. Um, and we have some great panelists with us um, who I will introduce to you in just a second. Uh, first of all, some quick logistics for this evening. So we're going to be together for about an hour tonight. Um, we've got about 45 minutes dedicated to all the wonderful content and interesting topics that we have for this evening. And we have another 10 minutes after that dedicated to uh, answering your questions. Now, we're going to also answer your questions throughout the session. So in your Zoom, um, you will see a Q&A in the uh, kind of toward the bottom right of your screen when you uh, scroll down to the bottom. Um, use that to ask, ask questions and I will do my best to moderate. Um, and we'll filter your questions throughout the session tonight, and then we'll definitely get to everything we possibly can uh, by the end uh, or before the end of the webinar. Um, this webinar is going to be replayable, if that's a real word. You can replay it. Let's go with that. Um, from 3wells.co, it'll be on our homepage. So if you miss anything or you want to see our smiling faces twice, um, you can uh, find the link there. And uh, the other thing I'll say is, we're going to give you our best advice from, uh, you know, great medical expertise and product expertise and, and personal experiences. But listen, you know, be smart, um, consult your doctor. Uh, we are not claiming to be, well, we have one doctor on our uh, with us tonight, but not all of us are doctors. So, uh, and even Dr. Debbie will, will stress to you, please talk to your doctor before you take any med medications or any other things. Um, just be safe and be healthy. So tonight, we uh, we have some fantastic panelists with us, and tonight we're going to be covering um, the core, which is using CBD and cannabis to bring new and exciting things to your love life, romance, uh, and of course, those intimate moments. Um, use your imagination. I'll leave it there. And tonight we're going to be covering five things. So uh, can cannabis and, and or CBD really enhance our love lives? Like, let's tackle that big question. Then we'll move into talking about CBD and THC. Uh, how they stimulate our bodies in relation to sex and romance, um, how THC and CBD contributes to our overall uh, sexual well-being, and then what to expect when you're using CBD and cannabis. For those of you that are experienced, you may have, you know, you know what's going to happen. For those of you that aren't, you can have some questions, and we'll get those answered for you tonight. And then, of course, the big thing is how much, uh, what to take, and um, when to take it, because when is a pretty important part of this. So, uh, with all of that, we have some wonderful panelists with us tonight, and I get the pleasure of introducing all of you to them. And our first panelist uh, is Gillian Levy. From um, uh, She is the co-founder and president of Humboldt Apothecary, which is a woman-owned business that manufactures tinctures, tablets, and topicals made using natural ingredients and botanicals that follow, and they're, they're fantastic about this, uh, sustainable and environmentally friendly practices. Um, Gillian is a big believer in justice for all, social causes, and doing right by the environment. And she originally hails from Seattle. Um, she loves to cook, and she has an affinity for Jewish comfort foods, of all things. Um, and she's a big uh, Al Green and John Coltrane fan. Um, our second panelist, Carrie Mapes. Carrie Mapes is the co-founder of Hello Again. Uh, they are the makers of cannabis-powered vaginal suppositories that combine the healing power of cannabis and, and botanicals, if I can get the word out, botanicals, uh, to provide relief from physical and emotional challenges brought on by menopause. Uh, Carrie is a graduate of UCLA, uh, Bachelor of Arts and MED, and uh, Carrie has, and I'm not telling tales here, this is, this is public knowledge, um, has personally dealt with menopause and the foggy memory and the loss of energy and et cetera that goes with that, and that was one of the big reasons that um, she and her business partner started Hello Again. Um, she's taught at private and public schools uh, as well as college. She lives in L.A., 
Uh, Carrie's a mom, a community volunteer, and she also is a support counselor for a crisis text line. And little known fact, but pretty amazing, she's a fantastic artist. So if you get the chance, check out her art. Um, and our third panelist tonight, who we affectionately um, call Dr. Debbie, and that is our uh, chief medical advisor, Dr. Debbie Malka. Um, Dr. Debbie Malka is, of course, an MD with her PhD in human genetics uh, from Columbia University and studied both natural and traditional medicines uh, with degrees from the University of New Mexico, uh, a, a School of uh, Medicine, and Santa Fe uh, College of Natural Medicine. Um, Dr. Debbie previously served as the medical director of Medican Inc., uh, a group of clinics providing medical marijuana evaluations in California, and they serve over 300,000 patients. So you can imagine the experience that Debbie's bringing to the table tonight. Um, and Debbie has this beautiful little place tucked off in the hills of New Mexico, um, and I've got to see it over Zoom. I haven't personally been there, but it, it looks absolutely stunning, and, and Dr. Debbie's a real outdoors woman. So with that, um, Dr. Debbie, I'm going to start with you tonight because we're going to dive in. And, you know, I have a I have a big question, and that is, can cannabis and CBD actually enhance our love lives, our romance, et cetera? And how does that happen? How, how, how does how do those two cannabinoids or overall cannabinoids do that for us? Hi there. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm the heavyweight, so I'm going to try to bring some easily digestible science to our listeners. Um, I want to talk about what cannabinoids are, because CBD is a cannabinoid and THC is a cannabinoid. And these are chemicals that do a lot of very varied and complex interactions in our body. And so before we can really understand how they work, we have to place them in our body in the system that regulates these cannabinoids and it's called the endocannabinoid system. And that system is innate in all animals and it's really complex and it does everything. By that, I mean everything. It regulates basic functions like sleep, temperature, uh, the autonomic nervous system, hormonal regulation, appetite, you know, uh, pain. And so when we take THC or CBD from our cannabis or CBD preparation into our body, it's going to interact with our own endocannabinoid system. So I hope that makes sense. So this endocannabinoid system has one function, one very important function, and that is to be a homeostatic regulatory system. That means it keeps us in balance. And that makes it really complicated to know what dose of a cannabinoid to take because we have our own endocannabinoids that they're interacting with. For example, THC actually stimulates our endocannabinoid system. And so when you take THC, it's like giving your body a boost of more endocannabinoids in general. I'm simplifying. CBD doesn't actually bind to the endocannabinoid system directly, but it modulates it. So it helps, CBD helps us to keep our own endocannabinoid system in balance. So these are both really important activities, either to stimulate our endocannabinoid system or to balance it. And because of that, it's not easy to say exactly whether there's going to be one dose or one effect on all people by these cannabinoids because Everybody's got their own endocannabinoid balance going on. So that's probably enough of that basic science. I hope that makes sense and we can take questions um, probably at the end. Um, but let's look at cannabinoids and sexual function. Um, so I actually looked this up and it turns out People are going to be surprised 
that our own endocannabinoid system and THC, which acts a lot like our own endocannabinoid system, actually is lowered. We have less endocannabinoids when we have sexual arousal. And when you take THC, surprised to hear, it actually also depresses sexual arousal. Now, that's just part of the picture. CBD modulates sexual arousal, so we don't say whether it stimulates or depresses it. But cannabis is not just THC or CBD. Cannabis has terpenes in it. And that's probably responsible for a lot of the effects that the cannabis will have on sexual function. Terpenes are other components in cannabis that affect mood and behavior. And sexual activity is closely linked to behavior. So for example, if there's a sedating terpene like myrcene, which smells skunky, so skunk strains have a lot of myrcene, it'll be relaxing, muscle relaxant. Um, it's, it's actually sort of more associated with body relaxation. So THC plus myrcene could actually be relaxing and bring body relaxation, which is sometimes very good for sexual activity. Another terpene I want to mention, it's called linalool and it smells like lavender. It's also very relaxing. So it really what this means is that it depends on the strain that you're taking, how much THC it has, how much CBD it has, what terpenes it has. And last of all, to complicate matters further, the dose matters a lot. And studies have shown that cannabis and CBD give a dose-dependent response as far as sexual arousal. In general, not in everyone, but in general, lower doses are better. They actually did a study where they showed that for women, um, they just tested women, that 71% of women responded positively to smoking one joint as far as sexual arousal. But when they got up to four joints, it actually depressed it. So we're back to that homeostatic um, kind of mechanism, which is keeping things in balance. You're going to need to find exactly the right amount. And everybody's different. So that is my very complex introduction into the chemicals that are involved in um, CBD and cannabis and how it can affect sexual behavior. Pretty much you're going to walk away from this saying, I really don't know what she said, because almost any response is possible. And that is where we're left. That's my take on it, folks. So Debbie and 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 Carrie and and, and Gary jump in here here as well. Uh, and I and sorry, I forgot to mention something really important. Uh, many of you will see Holman Ray uh, on uh, up in your top corner there. Holman's helping out tonight. Uh, she's uh, helping to facilitate and whatnot. So she's in the background doing wonderful things, making sure everything's working for everybody tonight. Just in case you're curious, uh, who's Holman Ray up in the corner? Now you know. Uh, but coming back to what you said, Debbie. So. I'm not a doctor. I'm a, I'm a lay person here. Is it fair for me to take away? One of the big takeaways I heard, heard you say was you, you need to do some personal experimentation. But the really important thing is to take it easy at first and see what your personal response is going to be. Because in general, cannabis slash CBD um, for, for romance and sex can be a great thing. As long as you don't overdo it and you have to find your own balance. Is that fair or inaccurate? That's pretty fair. And it's actually true of cannabis, CBD, and any response. It's really uniquely individual. But, but the good news is between all these different components, CBD, THC, and different strain properties, you know, individuals are likely to find something that gives them the response that they're looking for. I, I could probably say something um, about that. First of all, thank you for having me. And, you know, um, 
I guess through the, through the hello again lens, when we're talking about women in menopause and actually just women in general, um, so much of sex isn't between the legs. So much of it is between the ears and in the heart. And um, I think cannabis can really kind of help you physically set the table for sexual, a great sexual experience. CBD is a great uh, anti-inflammatory and it can soften your muscles. It can relax your pel pelvic floor so that when you do get into the bedroom, you're more, you know, you're more physically ready for the experience. And, you know, um, cannabis can also help with anxiety and irritability, mood, and, you know, mood should be a passing emotion, not a constant state of being. And if you, you can use cannabis to kind of address all of these things that have to do with your head and your heart and quiet the noise in your head and become more present in your body, which I all argue can, can lead to a much more satisfying sexual experience. All right, thank you. Um, so let's, let's go to our next question I, I have here. Um, actually, you know what, there's been a question uh, in the Q&A and the question is, can I use CBD serums as, I'm um, sorry, I'm gonna show my ignorance, LUB? Probably lube. Yeah, referring to lube. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was an acronym. Okay. Uh, can can it be used as a loop? I'll go ahead and jump in there because I do make a, a product. Humboldt Apothecary makes a product called Love Potion Number no. 7, and it can be used as a personal lubricant. So the short answer to that is yes. Um, you know, in the case of our product, it's in an MCT oil base. So it's a great personal lubricant if you're using it to self-pleasure or with a partner. It can't be used with um, latex because it'll break down the latex. But there are other lubes out there that are made that are water-based that can be used with latex. And um, yes, it can be a great addition because, um, you know, cannabis is... Um, it can actually dilate like the little capillary bed in your... Um, you know, genital tissues. So it's going to increase sensitivity to those areas. But the other um, kind of really amazing thing about cannabis is that it's analgesic. So it's, um, it's also good for pain. So it has this unique effect of kind of like um, doling down if there are uncomfortable sensations, you know, um, during sex that come up, uh, but it can also um, increase um, sexual pleasure and by, by increasing blood flow to those tissues. So it actually makes a great 75% of women report some kind of pain during a sexual experience. So it's, it's pain during sex is a real issue. As you age, uh, vaginal dryness is, you know, results in a lot of discomfort for sex, which snowballs into not wanting to have sex, which snowballs into, you know, you being more disconnected with your partner and whatnot. So um, you're right, Gillian, it's, it's really, it, cannabis does wonders for, for um, addressing the pain without making you numb, I would say. Would you agree? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a yeah. really good way to put it. Yeah. yeah, and it can definitely increase sensitivity as well. Um, mm -hmm. But it, but it has. I mean, I uh, read anecdotally that you know, um, what is it? It's like a, a lot of women experience kind of like a nerve nerve pain um, during sex, and it does have to do with vaginal dryness as well as psychological uh, factors um, that come up, you know, for a lot of people because of past traumas or injuries. And um, so it actually really can um, be very good at reducing that like excitatory nerve pain. Um, and, and so it just makes the whole experience yeah, more um, enjoyable in general. So Gillian, you touched on it just a second ago about overall sexual well-being and and carrie you had a great line near the beginning of you know love and romance i'm, I'm i hope i quote it correctly love and romance just isn't in the head between the legs it's it's very much in the head um you said it much more eloquently but i hope i got the gist of it but but gillian um can you stick with that for a second and just talk about uh cbd cannabis thc and overall sexual well-being and its contribution to that yeah, I mean, you know, it is really complex. Going back to the endocannabinoid system, I always think of um, the cannabinoids from cannabis being kind of nourishing to the endocannabinoid system. So if there's a deficiency or an imbalance, you can help to correct that imbalance. And, um, you know, part of 
I mean, there, there are receptors for um, endocannabinoid receptors all throughout your brain, which is really, well, except for in the brain stem, which is important because then it doesn't affect any physiological functions that, that could, you know, impair breathing or anything like that. So that's another reason cannabis is so cool. But um, part of what happens during sex is kind of this whole cascade of neurotransmitters and hormones in your brain that then, you know, affect um, the whole experience in your body. Um, and so uh, cannabis does stimulate um, uh, dopamine and, and that in turn stimulates production and release of oxytocin and serotonin. So these are all kind of like the love hormones and neurotransmitters that really um, have an impact on, you know, the, the overall experience and, you know, how much you can kind of drop into, you know, your sex and, and just be able to enjoy it. It also, oxytocin actually suppresses cortisol production, which is a stress hormone. So physiologically, there is a lot going on with cannabis. And, th and this is really just scratching the surface because there's still so much that we don't know. Um, but, you know, from, from the perspective of like, um, you know, immediately when you're having sex, there's, there's all of this stuff happening that is uh, directly, um, you know, moderated by cannabis use. Um, and that, that is, you know, topical as well as taking it internally. Um, but then long-term just, just cannabis, the ability of it to kind of, um, relax, relax you and help you kind of, um, reset your day. Um, you know, I think that's another big reason why cannabis can be so beneficial for sex, because as Carrie was mentioning before, you know, so much, about, you know, um, sexuality and, you know, having a good sex life is about, you know, getting out of your head and, and, you know, sort of like letting your worries go for a little bit and just dropping into the present. Um, so I think, I think in so many ways, cannabis can be really effective for that. Carrie, is there anything you want to add to that as far as, you know, overall well-being because uh, you know i think about the products that that you produce at hello again and you know I'm, as best i can as a guy <laughs> let's just call it like it is you know i have a general concept of menopause and the emotional turmoil and roller coaster it can be let alone the physical is there anything you know more that you can you can highlight there as overall well-being yeah, well, our, so our our product, Hello Again, they're vaginal suppositories and they're designed for everyday use. So we're very much, um, you know, using cannabis daily in order to bring balance back to the system. And really what we call it is feel like yourself again. And, you know, our, our product, because it's a vaginal suppository, you don't get a psychoactive high. We can use a little bit more um, THC and get the real benefits from that without the high. And so, you know, <laughs> kind of the poetry, I think I've always liked this about our product, the poetry of taking this space that has been kind of shared space has been a, a source of uh, or maybe you felt like the purpose of it is to give somebody else pleasure or you know, to give birth, all of these things, all of these other reasons why you know your your sexuality exists. Now toward now when you're in menopause, which is kind of the end of your fertility, taking the space back and using it for your own wellness and your own healthiness and feeling healthy and not high, that's kind of what our whole ethos at Hello Again is about. So as it relates to sexuality, I mean, I really, I truly believe that when you're, you're sleeping well and you're, you know, I said it a little bit earlier, when you're patient and you're not irritable and everyone's not on your last nerve and you're not breaking out in a sweat <laughs> and you can find your words and you have focus and you feel like yourself, um, then, you know, libido does go up. It just does. And, you know, vaginal dryness, when you can address that too, which our product does, then, you know, you're not walking around in, in a little bit of pain all day long and you are more receptive to the bedroom for sure. Um, so, you know, taking care of yourself, I think is a really big part of, of enjoying your sexuality and women, I think, I, well, I know women might, no, look, no one wants to lose their sexuality. Nobody wants to be a substandard partner. Everybody wants to be, you know, the best partner they can to the person that they love. And everybody wants 
a healthy sex life. And so taking care of yourself, like you've been taking care of other people for, for the rest of your, you know, the previous years of your life for a lot of us, um, starts to become a priority. And, um, that really just involves everything in your life to set the stage for having a really healthy, vibrant sex life and being the most interesting person that you can be and feeling good about, you know, how you're spending your time. It's all a part of being sensual, sensual and sexual. Let's talk about those romantic moments. And, you know, and I don't just mean in the bedroom, I mean, like, romance, love and dinner and, you know, the times together. There are so many ways, you know, we've talked about um, Gillian at, at Humboldt Apothecary and Love Potion Number 7, which is only one of uh, all the tinctures and tablets and, and topolos that you have and carry with uh, vaginal suppositories. There are so many ways to ingest CBD, THC, cannabis, etc. cetera. Um, do you have any thoughts on, you know, in those romantic moments, to, you know, ways that you would, uh, methods to ingest that you would suggest or bias toward? Well, I, I can, I can start. I mean, I've said it, I said a little bit of it. I think that using cannabis to set the stage for those moments is key. And then when those moments come, you know, there definitely is a lot of benefit to using, to finding the right lube for you and using it. And for a lot of women my age, it may be the first time that you've needed help with that. You may not have needed a personal lubricant, you know, in your previous decades, but you might need it now. So um, experimenting with that and finding the right one is definitely um, key. We're all used to having a little bit of wine maybe to set the stage. And I, I would challenge anyone out there who hasn't tried cannabis yet to give that a try. You know, wine is wine and alcohol. It does let down your inhibitions and it does make you relax, which is great for sexuality, but it's also a sedative. And for the nuts and bolts of sex, it's, it's not the best. It's not the best thing. Um, I think it pales in comparison to what cannabis can do for you physiologically during sex. Gillian, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously being the tincture company that um, I am, I am kind of partial to tinctures. I really like them because it's really easy to um, titrate like a very specific dose for your needs and to start with a low dose and work your way up. Uh, we have um, a line of products that it, it have other botanicals in them and they're all effects-based products. And so like we have a tincture that is called Calm that has some other herbs in it that are really relaxing. And we actually um, promote this idea of using tinctures to make a drink instead of alcohol, um, just as an alternative. So you can make kind of a mixed drink and have the same sort of like um, act of, of kind of, you know, unwinding and relaxing and dropping into this space. It's, it's kind of like a ritual, but then um, you get to experience the effects of cannabis, which, um, you know, echoing what Carrie said, um, cannabis I mean, alcohol, I, a little alcohol can be like a very nice lubricant, but ultimately it is um, a sedative and it kind of depresses your central nervous system, whereas cannabis um, can be just um, a really exciting way to connect with your partner. And I think tinctures are a great way to do that. Our uh, Love Potion product is like a sublingual oil-based tincture. So that's a really fun one to use in that um, it tastes really good. Um, it tastes really good on people's skin, so it can be used topically. It can be consumed internally, and um, it's just it's just a really fun product to play with. Um, I think also chocolate can be nice, like a, a cannabis chocolate bar could be a very sensual experience to share with a partner um, or to indulge for yourself and some self love. Um, that's another nice one. But chocolate can be a little more dangerous in the sense that you could quickly exceed your dose because it tastes so good. So just something to be mindful of. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, for everybody on the call, um, Gillian had no idea I was going to show that picture of the two people jumping on the bed with their products. So <laughs> it's funny that you said how much fun it can be. Um, now, while we're talking about fun, um, I know I'm getting, I, I'm deviating a little bit here, but um, Carrie, I, I love this. Um, I'm going to show something on my screen right now um, from from Hello Again. And uh, here we go. I, I love, you know, just how plain and bold and out there and embracing, you know, make your vagina a happy place. Like, that's just so great. 
<laughs> Why not? Like it's fun. It's it's wonderful. It's it's a great thing about being an, an adult human being. So um yeah. showing your products there as well. Well, thank you for that. I just, you know, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about using this space for your wellness. You know, it's it's it is really important. It's 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 a you know, I think I think it's a you, I don't know. My mom told me about sex. Like she never used the word. Like she actually got through the whole thing without ever naming a part. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we're you know we're definitely beyond that as women. And um, you know, it's it's what makes us what makes us us. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I, I I love how both both of you and your companies you know have fun with all of this, and and you know that's exactly how it should be. Um, so, so, um, um, you know, on this whole notion of, of products and, and ways to consume, Debbie, I got a, a, an important question for you. And that is, and I realize you know, you started the, um, you started off by saying, you know, as human beings, we all have different tolerances and, and our bodies respond differently. Is there any sort of broad guidance you could give us about being cautious and smart about how much we take? and when we should take uh, cannabis in relation to romance and sex? I would say that it's really important to know what you're trying to achieve. Um, If you wanna be relaxed for a several hour long period, tinctures are awesome because they last from about four to six hours and they come on in 15 minutes. And you can regulate the dosage by the drop. So you could maybe, maybe if you're not a regular cannabis user, use maybe two milligrams of THC or five milligrams of CBD and start there. And a half hour later, add some more. That way you won't overdo it. So that that would... Kind of be like the five to 10 milligram edible if you were having chocolate. If you're an experienced cannabis user, you probably already have a tolerance and 10 milligrams isn't going to even affect you. So you really need to know your own tolerance. I mean, people that use pot every day, they're going to need more like in the 20 milligram range to make a difference. So, um, If you're just trying to set the stage for two to four hours and inhalation is the best method, comes on quick in about 10 minutes, last two to four hours, and then the episode's over. And that is really easy to dose. You just take one puff at a time, wait 15 minutes, and then do it again. So um, the only place you get in trouble with inhalation is if you're doing concentrates like waxes or hash or, you know, concentrates can be eight times as concentrated as just full flour. So, you know, one drop of a concentrate is a lot. Um, But feel free to have one puff off of a vape pen or, you know, a few puffs off of a cannabis cigarette and... That's that's going to set you up for the next two to four hours. I wanted to say one thing also about the vaginal application method. To the best of my knowledge, that lasts maybe up to about eight hours. So that's good for overnight. Carrie, is that about right on the. On yeah, the- we say we say six hours, but six to eight hours. It's true. I think, um, you know, I'm such a huge proponent of starting with topical use as an introductory method for cannabis, too, because you get to experience all of these really wonderful benefits of of what the plant can do. It's a great way to get to know it, but you're not going to have the psychoactivity. So um, in that way, it's a really gentle, fun, like playful way to get to know what it feels like to to use cannabis without, you know, the, the psychoactive effects. And I agree with you, Gillian. And I would say, you know, maybe you don't want to jump right in with, you know, THC lube. If it maybe use something on your, you know, massage something onto your calf 
on one leg and don't do it on the other. And just kind of get a sense of what cannabis does when, you know, the cannabinoids connect with the receptors in your skin and how your muscles feel and how you relax and, or take a bath, use a, a bath bomb. It's a great way to get kind of that first go in, you know, go in the shallow end of the pool and, you know, familiarize yourself with those sensations and those that increased sensitivity and relaxation and then move move into um, topicals and lubricants and tinctures eventually and suppositories as well suppositories too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's somewhere in between topical and um, I mean because you're not putting it through your digestive system but it might right. go a little deeper than just a topical a deep topical yeah <laughs> So the one thing I do want to stress, because I've, I've seen it time and time and time again uh, with friends and family personally about dosing. And uh, and it, this doesn't apply, obviously, to topicals and things like that, much more on what you've ingested, whether it's smoking and especially an edible. So I'll caution everyone who's with us tonight. There, there's an acronym that's commonly used, GLASS, go low and start slow. And really listen to that um, and start, you know, don't go crazy. Just start with five milligrams. And if it's an edible, like, like Dr. Debbie said, a minimum a half an hour. And I often tell my friends, you know, give yourself 45 minutes to an hour because some people digest in different speeds and what they've eaten throughout, throughout the day, et cetera. Because I've seen so many times where people will after five or 10 minutes after eating a gummy or chocolate, say, I don't feel anything. And next thing I know, they've run off to the kitchen and they've grabbed some more and they've eaten two or three more pieces. And, you know, an hour or two later, they're not having fun because it was too much. Yeah. So take your time. And, you know, when especially when it comes to romance and, and you, you both want to enjoy the entire evening and not be passed out because you ate too much or consume too much. So just take it easy. And what's right for you may not be right for your partner. So there's a there's a little added level of difficulty there as far as going slow. So, you know, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I always recommend for people, you know, experiment with yourself first before, you know, it, it's a lot of pressure to say like, hey, we're going to bring in this new product, whether it's a joint or, you know, a tincture or any product and, you know, it's going to be, you know, sexy and we're going to just, it's, it's a lot of expectation. I think it's better to kind of do a little experimenting with yourself, you know, find, find what is the right dose, like what, what feels good in your body. This is the right amount to maybe get you, um, you know, spiced up and, and, you know, stimulated and not, not tired so that you're going to, you know, pass out. So um, I think once you find that familiarity um, with your own body, it's a lot easier to, you know, feel really confident during, you know, sex to um, to be able to just kind of drop into that um, zone with your partner. So talking about zones and dropping in, there's there's, you know, with cannabis, there are some distinct sensations um, and, and, you know, I don't know on our uh, on our webinar tonight how many people have, have experienced cannabis. And so so let's assume there's someone uh, uh, with us tonight that really hasn't had much experience with cannabis. Can you describe what sensations they should expect so that they kind of know what's coming and can be comfortable and just let it happen as opposed to be resistant to it? Can you can you share anything along those lines with us? You know, cannabis is a vasodilator. So, you know, it's your blood is going to, the blood flow is going to increase probably much more quickly than you're used to that happening. So that's one, one sensation right off the bat. We talked a little bit earlier about increased sensitivity to touch and all kinds of any stimulation really. So, you know, I think that is wise to be prepared for that, to be prepared for increased um, sensitivity to all different kinds of touch. Um, you know, if you are, if it's not a topical and you're ingesting or smoking, then, you know, time kind of gets, um, a, your sense of time gets a little bit um, off. And so the experience can really seem to like last a lot longer, maybe than it does in actuality, but who cares? Whatever your experience is, it is, but definitely, you know, it, it can, it can feel like the experience lasts much longer, which is, you know, a lot of people really love and is a great part of cannabis and sex. Gillian, what have I missed? 
Gosh, well, I, I think that um, those are some really good points. I, I mean, back to um, like the physiology, you know, when you um, are using cannabis internally, you're going to be um, impacting your neurotransmitters and hormones sexually. So, you know, there's there's some pretty good data out there that suggests like um, you're going to increase dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin. So these are all really important um, in, you know, um, creating, you know, stimulating like um, just the sexual experience. So, so desire um, you're going to with oxytocin get um, increased blood flow um, of like the erogenous zones, um, the tissues you're going to um, enhance, um, you know, a lot of the, the pleasurable sensations that come from um, being sexually aroused. So uh, yeah, it really is along with increased sensitivity. Um, it, you know, there, there is an increased pleasure and also, um, a, with oxytocin, you know, it's like the love hormone, um, you are, you know, helping to kind of form like a deeper connection, uh, with your partner, you're feeling more bonded to your partner. Um, and so that's, that's really important. Um, and another thing that oxytocin does, that's just really neat is that it, it helps you, um, let go of kind of like a, a fear response that happens in your brain that, you know, we can sometimes hold on to really even on a cellular level, if there's trauma or just um, stress that you're carrying, you know, from, you know, um, work related stress or just out anything outside of the relationship that can, can weigh you down. Um, it really kind of allows you to let that go and um, just uh, be able to drop into the moment and, and release that. So um, yeah, I, I think a, a big part of it is, um, you know, all of those, that cascade of the hormones and neurotransmitters in your brain that uh, really impacts this experience and, and cannabis really has a, has a big impact there. So it's, it's pretty amazing, really. I wanted to put in a plug for CBD because um, Preparing for the effects of CBD is actually quite different than preparing for the effects of, of cannabis, which mostly has a lot of THC in it. So a lot of people are disappointed when they use CBD because they don't feel much of anything. You don't get stoned. You don't get disoriented. And you're not sure anything happened. But a couple of really important things do happen. You get more relaxed. It definitely is relaxing. It's a known anti-anxiety sort of um, therapy. And it's a muscle relaxant. So your head might not be altered, but your body definitely gets altered. So CBD can sneak up on you and you're all relaxed and your muscles are relaxed and you're not worried about anything and you don't feel any different in your head. So um, that's a really good kind of safe way to enter into the cannabis world is to start with something that has a lot of CBD in it. Debbie, that's we have two SKUs. One is a, a nighttime version and one's daytime our daytime has a lot more CBD in it than the nighttime. The ratios are different, a little bit of THC, a lot more CBD in the daytime. And what we tell people when they try our product is the nighttime version, you're going to feel that sense of relaxation and you, you just lean into going to sleep and you'll go to sleep and stay to sleep. But the daytime version is much more subtle. And that's exactly what you just said. And what we recommend is people use it put it in the morning, forget about it. And then at the end of the day, kind of think back and really you're, you're more patient. Your, you know, your thumb that always hurts, doesn't hurt. Your restless legs weren't bothering you. Any, any of the myriad of things that happen because of inflammation are taken down some notches and you, you've been more patient and you didn't start a fight when, when fighting words were, were, were said. So, um, I agree with you totally. It's a much, much more subtle effect, but it, that doesn't mean it's insignificant. It's not. And, and, and Gillian, you know, we're talking about products. I, I know, um, cause I have experience with Humboldt apothecary products. You've got THC and CB. I know you're, uh, I'll put it on the screen here. You have both THC and CBD um, in yours as well. And so you have love potion number seven, 
but would you recommend you know using some uh, other products as well you know maybe more cb at one point and then love potion uh, at another point yeah you know it's it's a really personal choice um a lot of our products are really health and wellness focused in general and you know we um write and you know talk a lot about that if you go check out our website um but um, our love potion number seven is, is a lot about just, um, having, it's just kind of a fun product, you know? Um, and you know, for a lot of people, THC can be very euphoric and, um, really pleasurable. Uh, but yes, we have, um, just about every ratio of CBD to THC in our various tinctures, um, and, and a lot of different options. So, um, as, as Debbie said before, it really is very personal, what works for one person best is, is going to be, you know, totally different than what works for the next person and how they respond. So, um, it's a really personal choice. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I recommend, you know, just kind of experimenting around with different products and, and figuring out, you know, what is best for you. We got a question here and, and I'll, I'll, uh, Remind everyone on the webinar tonight, so get your questions in. We're moving into Q&A, so um, we have a question here about how can CBD be used during pregnancy? You know, there's been a lot of research about potential risks for cannabis use in pregnancy, and without going into all of the huge laundry list of things they say about it, Nobody has ever come up with any reason not to use CBD during pregnancy, especially in moderate doses. There's just nothing out there about how it can possibly harm the mother or the fetus in pregnancy. So it's really safe. Um, uh, how you can use it, it's really good for nausea. So a lot of people who have nausea during pregnancy, they can feel really safe about taking CBD to handle their nausea. So you, their bottom line is you haven't seen or heard of a lot of risks associated with CBD in pregnancy at all. None, zero, nada. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, are there any other recommendations or, or products or if you want to give personal experiences, great. If not, I understand um, that you could recommend to, to the audience. Cause I, I'm sure, you know, what people have heard is you can smoke, you know, take a puff every 15 minutes or so. Um, the suppositories uh, are great. And the, you know, the, the, the uh, love potion number seven caution not to use with latex, but great as a personal lubricant, anything else that you would suggest take or to use to, to enhance the mood. Well, definitely. I think bath bombs definitely enhance the mood. I mean, people have been taking long, hot baths to feel sensual for a long time. And the addition of a cannabis bath bomb is terrific. I'm going to put it out there as being one of the guys on the webinar tonight that, you know, let's just call it like it is. We can use a lot of help in the romance department. Many of our <laughs> many of the guys on the call. So bath bombs is a great <laughs> idea. You know, maybe some candles, you know, mm -hmm. whatever else. Um, well, and I love what, what Gillian said about making the tincture into a drink. I hadn't thought of that before. I, you know, the, definitely, I think, you know, sitting down and having, having a drink together and creating that gap between the work day and the bedroom is a part of the ritual of sexuality and romance. And if you can start thinking about cannabis based drinks and making tinctures and teas into drinks and, and starting there, I think that's terrific. We have a ton of really incredible drink recipes on our website. So go check it out. And um, <laughs> Instagram too. We've got a lot of really great ideas. If you're looking to replace your alcoholic beverages with some really creative, fun um, cannabis cocktails. We've we've got you covered there. And I'll put up um, the URLs for both uh, Hello Again and Humboldt Apothecary in just a second. So um, no worries, everyone will get to uh, see your, the, the URL and where they can go. Um, okay, so what we've heard tonight, I'm, I'm going to hit some highlights. So I'm asking all our panelists to, to jump in if I've missed anything important. Um, but what I've heard specifically tonight is, first and foremost, 
enjoy it. It works in a, in a variety of different ways, THC, CBD, you know, all the terpenes, everything that Debbie talked about, that it can truly enhance the overall romance and sexual experience. And with that, I've all, I've heard you all say, go low, start slow. Um, don't expect, you know, you know, that you get the right dose right away. Experiment, you know, by yourself and or with your partner, but just take it easy and have some fun with it. Um, and that the, the other thing is, is that um, I, I guess the big thing that I heard was just to be relaxed and that CBD and THC can put you in a much more relaxed state, which I hadn't thought about and just open you up to the experience and keep you present. And I think both Carrie, you and Gillian said it helps you to be present. And I think candidly, that's, that's a big struggle for us all right now being in lockdown and, you know, on zoom calls all the time is, is just being present with the one you love. And if, if CBD and or THC and the terpenes and everything inside of cannabis can help you do that then try it and, and experiment with it. But is that a fair recap? Absolutely. And be, be kind to yourself. These are extremely odd times that we're living in right now. And there's very little space between the stresses of our day and what's supposed to be our, you know, relaxation and time for love at night. And cannabis can really help with that transition and, you know, take care of yourself. Oh, Carrie, well, I've got you. We just had a, I'm just about to wrap up, but we've had a last minute question. How long does it take for the suppository to start working? It usually starts working within half an hour. Usually about in half an hour, you'll feel the effects. And then the effects last, as Debbie, Dr. Debbie said, um, six hours, eight hours. So, and our suppositories are designed for everyday use, but many people don't feel that they need to use them every day. I use them about every third day. And I find that that keeps my systems regulated. I'll also use them preemptively if I know I have a day where I need to really be on my toes and be my best. Um, I'll use, I'll choose to use one preemptively in the morning and then, you know, sleep as needed. There's nothing you can't do with a good night's sleep, but there's very little you can when you don't get any. <laughs> All right. So uh, I, I promised to make sure that I uh, shared the URLs uh, and I'll have a couple for you in just a second. Um, and I will share my screen right now so we can get those up uh, for you. So I'm going to give you a couple so everyone in the audience, you can have a couple of URLs here. So these were your experts for this evening as we wrap up. Uh, Carrie Mapes, Gillian Levy, and Dr. Debbie or Deborah Malka. Um, you can find more about their products and their companies at Three Wells uh, and the URLs at the bottom of the screen here. Dr. Debbie has a profile on threewells.co, uh, so you can check her out in full detail as well. Um, and you can also, um, there's a replay going to be available at threewells.co. And if you want to visit Humboldt Apothecary and or Hello Again directly, I've put the URLs for both our illustrious panelists' uh, websites on the screen right now, and this will also be in the replay. So with that, um, thank you all very much, uh, Carrie and Gillian and Dr. Debbie, for all of your wonderful advice tonight and for being open and, and honest and sharing all of your experiences and your products and everything with us. Because, I, I, you know, sex is such a great part of life, and let's just enjoy it. Um, and, and you use cannabis and CBD and THC and everything that goes with it. So, um, again, thank you all very much. And, and I'll mention that we do have an, another uh, webinar coming up, which I'll put on the screen right now for you. I was up just a second ago because there is another upcoming webinar, uh, and this is the newest innovation in natural skincare with Papa Barkley. That's February 24th at 5.30 p.m. You can register. Just go to the links. They'll be up uh, in two days on threewells.co. And a quick reminder, everyone, please remember that uh, we made no medical recommendations here tonight. We're sharing information and to please consult your physician uh, before taking anything and doing anything uh, just to be safe and healthy. So once again, Carrie, Gillian, Dr. Debbie, thank you all so much. It has been fantastic. And uh, everyone have a great evening. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Good night. All right. Happy Valentine's Day coming up. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Bye now.